Hey everyone, so for today's video, I wanted to jump on here and show you how I conceal my under eyes. So if you're someone with hollowness under the eyes, if you have more deep set eyes, and you also find that you just have generally dry skin under your eyes, this is the video for you. When thinking about concealing the under eyes, it's really important to note that you're not just dealing with discoloration, you are dealing with a hollow. And once I mentioned this on my channel that I look for concealers that specifically conceal the hollowness under my eyes rather than just correct the actual darkness, a lot of you guys wanted to see what I meant by that, the techniques I use and the concealers and different products that I use. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to show you two different techniques that I use, one on each side of my face, and I'll give you an in-depth look at the products I use and in general, how I get a more flat look to the hollowness under my eyes, all while still looking like skin. That is so important to me. I really find that some really full kind of heavy coverage concealers can actually bring attention to the hollowness that you have under the eyes. That's why a lot of us can pile on concealer under the eyes and we still don't understand why our eyes look sunken and dark. It's this funny paradox that happens with concealers that you can add a lot and somehow you look even more tired. It is because of that hollowness and you really do have to find the right products and the right formulations that are good at kind of flattening out that area or at the bare minimum Minimum, not exaggerating that hollowness because a lot of concealers that are full coverage and say will conceal everything under your eyes they will definitely exaggerate that hollowness. So if you are one of the people that requested this video, definitely make sure to give this video a thumbs up or if you're just generally excited about it. And if you like me, if you enjoy the video, I would love to have you back. So make sure to subscribe as well. And with all of that, let's jump in. Okay, so I have already prepped my skin and put on foundation. For prep, I went in with my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is really, really good because it's both hydrating, but it also gives you a really buttery base. I do take this up under the eyes. I think that if you use something too rich under the eyes to prep the skin, your concealer is going to crease a little bit faster, which I know a lot of you want to avoid, but using a product like this is really going to help hydrate the area, which is really, really important in making this look as skin-like as possible, but it's also not going to be too slippy or too greasy. So highly, highly recommend this product. I mean, this is a holy grail for me. I actually did try out the Bobbi Brown Eye Base. It's a new product and I just find that this is kind of, you know, the go-to. It's still my preferred. So the first step when looking at your under eyes and figuring out what techniques to use is what I like to do is really take a look at the under eyes and figure out if you're getting true darkness within a color or you just have more deep set eyes or just more general hollowness. If you lean your head back like this and you take a look in a mirror and take a compact and you lean your head back and look at the under eyes if you can see a distinct color whether that's a blueness a purpleness then you need to do a little bit of color correction to conceal that now if you do this and you really don't see much of a dark color then you just have general hollowness you don't really have any discoloration and i think for me, that is really, really important to note because if you're using a bunch of color correctors and concealers and really layering on product when all you have is hollowness, I think it's actually counterintuitive. For a very long time, all I had was just general hollowness under my eyes. I didn't really have any discoloration, but as I've gotten a little bit older, longer nights, you know, more of a workload, I do notice a little bit of some discoloration. The first method I'm going to show you is my tried and true. It's really the method that I'm using most often. It's going to take care of both the hollowness under the eyes as well as any minor discoloration that you have. So number one, again, a good base, no matter what technique you're using. And next I'm going in with a concealer formula that I truly stand behind because it's 
I think really one of the best concealers out on the market and that is the Kosas Revealer Concealer. Let me tell you why I really really stand behind this formula. One, it's a very natural finish so you will have a little bit of a dew, a little bit of a luminosity but not so dewy that it looks really really reflective and not so matte that it looks really crackly or drying under the eyes. I would rather not wear concealer if the concealer is going to look dry, seriously. So this is one that I really depend on because of that natural finish. It also has a medium coverage. So that medium coverage is still going to conceal what you need it to conceal while not being too full coverage so that it actually brings attention under the eyes, I really find that a very high coverage concealer can often bring attention to darkness in a kind of backwards way. And this also sets itself, so you don't necessarily need a powder. Now, I will show you a powder that I like with my dry skin if you do want to set your under eyes, but this one almost has a kind of self-setting quality to it that I really, really enjoy. And it also has caffeine, so if you have an under eye that is a little bit more puffy if you wake up really early in the morning and you put on concealer right away before work. Sometimes our concealer just isn't going to look good because the eyes look a little bit more swollen. This I find actually kind of flattens out the area and I think that's why I also find that this works incredibly well as a concealer that conceals the hollowness, kind of flattens out that hollowness or even um, I guess kind of fills in the hollows and doesn't draw attention to them. There are plenty of concealers, again, that will cover the darkness, but if you turn, you can see the hollow and that kind of depth even more. This is one that I highly recommend. I do have some other recommendations that I'll talk about in the second half of this video as well. I actually have two different shades. So I have the shade number one, and this is actually a little bit more of a yellow tone. You can see it right there. This is what I have been using and they actually expanded their shade range and I picked up another shade. But on a typical everyday basis, I would just use this all over the under eyes and just be done. This is a really nice brightening color. It has a little bit more of that yellow undertone that kind of brightens up the area. But if I'm not dealing with a lot of discoloration necessarily, I can just go in with that and be set and all good. But if you are experiencing a little bit of discoloration, I also have the shade 1.5C, which is a cooler undertone with a little bit more peach. You can see it when they're right next to each other. The actual shades are very similar, but the undertones are different. And that's going to be really helpful when we go under the eyes. So what I'm going to do is take 1.5C, which is again, a little bit more of that peachy undertone. And this works specifically really well for me because, because the darkness under my eyes tends to be a little bit more blue and a peach undertone is going to counteract that really well. If you have a little bit more green, then you can definitely look into more of a true red, and if it's a little bit more purple, then you might want to go with something a little bit more yellow. Just take a look at a color wheel, look at the color opposite of that, and you'll notice what color will help to counteract that color that you're trying to disguise. And what I do is I take this concealer and I really like this wand because it's skinny and it's a flat kind of doe foot. So I just take it right where that hollow is. I have hollowness all the way up under here because I have just more generally deep set eyes. So taking that concealer and putting it right where that hollowness is, a really, really good way at concealing it. And our next step, and it's a very important step with a liquid concealer, is to let it sit on the skin. This is something that I don't see enough people doing. If you deal with darkness under the eyes and you have not tried this, I really, really highly recommend trying it. So I'm gonna let this concealer dry a little bit. And what that's going to do is once it kind of sinks into the skin a little bit and dries down, the coverage isn't going to move around as much. So you're really setting yourself up for success, especially if you don't want to worry about perfect technique. This is a really surefire way of making sure that you're not going to move the coverage 
in the kind of corrector concealer shade all over the face and kind of undo everything that we're trying to do. As much as I do think that the right concealer shade is going to be very vital in kind of correcting the hollowness and the darkness under the eyes, I think a good formula is just as important. There are just so many nice concealers out there that don't actually help with hollowness because of the formulation and the way they react with a hollow. Your under eyes can look nice and the actual texture can look good. Like it can look hydrated, but somehow it doesn't disguise that hollowness. So really the formulations that I'm talking about today are just as important as the techniques in my opinion. I mentioned this in a recent video and you guys really Really wanted those recommendations so I wanted to put them in this video so next what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy compact and I'm using a very very small sponge please feel free to use a brush if you are a brush person for me being that I do have dry dark circles I find that sometimes a brush can brush up texture if that makes sense and especially under the eyes where I get the most scaliness that is not what I want to do I use a little sponge well one I'm sure you can notice it's very dirty I apologize for that in advance the reason that I didn't clean it before this video is that I use a dry sponge this is another tip that I highly recommend that you guys do when you are blending out the concealer go in with a dry sponge if you haven't tried it because a dry sponge will really concentrate the coverage. And if you're using a truly good formula that's hydrating, you don't need the extra moisture of a beauty blender to make it look more natural. So what I do is I now just press that concealer where it is under the eye. Again, if you are missing this corner, and you can't figure out why your eyes still look dark, I think that's a place that people often miss. Do you see how that color has concealed it? But also if you look over, like because of the actual formula and the texture, it just, it kind of just sinks in, almost like a filler, like the hollow that you have under your eyes. This, this formula is in incredible, you guys. And we got even more coverage because we let it set. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take my regular shade, well, my more brightening shade, I should say, and this is the shade one. And again, this is a little bit more yellow, so it's going to kind of brighten up the area. Honestly, I could just take this all under the eyes, let it set, and then blend it out, and that's what I kind of do on an everyday basis. But if I really want to concentrate on the hollowness and make sure that it looks, it's best this is a good technique to use so now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to place it where I typically would my concealer I am someone that takes my concealer on the lid as well I use it as kind of a base just letting this sit will give you the absolute most coverage don't worry we're still gonna be able to blend this out perfectly. So don't worry about it looking all stripey after we're done. And again, if you don't wanna spend the money on two different concealers, again, using the technique of applying this, letting it sit and then blending will still give you enough coverage, I personally think, to look good and to still conceal that hollow. Okay, now that we have let it set, we can go two different directions here. If you really do want to make it look a little bit more natural, if you want to sheer out the product, go in with a damp sponge and do so. But what I'm going to do is again, go in with a dry sponge to really make sure that the coverage stays under the eyes. So here we go. I'm gonna start on the outer corner. And do you see how we let that sit, but it's still blending? really really beautifully now i'm going to very softly tap this in to the lid again we're not really dragging we're just pressing the product in now i like to take the sponge right in the hollow and then kind of move it up there you can see the before and after of using the concealer and then not using any concealer. Even as I tilt my head over, you can see that the hollow, I mean the hollow's still there, 
but it's smoothed out into the rest of the concealer in a way that the hollowness doesn't look more exaggerated. So that's a great way on an everyday basis to be able to one, conceal any of the darkness you have under your eyes, two, make sure that the hollows look a little bit flatter, and three, actually make sure that the quality of the skin under your eyes still looks good. It's really all about finding that perfect formula for your skin. So you could go ahead and actually set the under eye. I don't feel the need to, again, because this is more of a kind of self-setting concealer, I find that it looks really good without that. But on this eye, I will show you how I would set my concealer and the powder that I would use. So next, I'm going to show you if you have more truly dark circles, like if you actually have um, some more pigmentation problems, this would be my way to conceal it. So you're first going to go in with a color corrector, of course. I have two. This one from Tarte, it's the Tarte CC Under Eye Corrector. This has been a product I've used for a very, very long time and I love it. This is the light medium. There's also a bit of a deeper shade, but this is a really nice kind of salmon-y peach. And then we also have this one from Becca. It's the light to medium under eye corrector. So this is the Becca over here can see it has a really nice brightening effect. And that is the Tarte CC right next to it. The Tarte CC is way more of that peachy shade, whereas the Becca is definitely more pink. Stuck my freaking nail straight into that under eye corrector. So the one that I'm going to use today is the Tarte CC, just because this is kind of a tried and true for me. And what I'm going to do is not stick my finger into this one as well. I'm going to take the same sponge that I had before and just on the very top of the sponge, I'm going to conceal that hollow like we were talking about before and what we basically what we did before. Right in that hollow. And the difference between this texture is all in the kind of creaminess of it. This is way more kind of thick emollient, need less product for sure, and it's more about building a thin layer with this method. You don't wanna go in with too much product. Um, you can get away with that with a liquid concealer, but with this kind of cream concealer, you cannot. And look at that, already, with the right formula and the right color, it has perfectly camouflaged that. And it still looks like skin. It still looks natural. That is what is important. And another technique I like to do, if I find that I'm getting a lot of darkness right at the inner corner, I almost like to do this as um, a replacement for an inner corner highlight. Just kind of gives you a naturally brightened look. I'll concentrate just a touch more there. You see how it kind of like really brightens up that corner. And you'll notice with this technique, we're not letting anything sit. These kind of creamier concealers don't need to set um, in order to get more coverage. They already have the coverage on the ready. And next I'm going to go in with my Undone Concealer. This is the Conceal to Reveal palette. And this is the shade 420. It is more of a pinky kind of shade. And again, a shade like this, I find for my skin tone, is really going to help with discoloration. And what I like to do with this concealer is just take it straight onto a sponge. You'll see that there's actually three different levels of coverage. I stick my sponge straight into the middle and go with that. And then I just slowly build up the product. Here we go, we're just pressing. You can always add more coverage. Working in those thin layers with a cream product like this is the best way to go. And notice that the creams that I'm using are a little bit more emollient. They have a little bit more richness to them. They're not really waxy or thick. They're not going to look heavy under the eyes. Still going to look really skin-like. So again, same thing, taking it onto the lid. I personally have quite a bit of veins on the lid and those colors can kind of pull from the colors under my eyes and make it look darker than it actually is. So again, we're concealing that. And there we have it. Again, you can see 
the hollowness has been flattened out, the under eyes still look bright and hydrated. But let's say that you want to use a little bit of powder just to set things down a little bit. This also will help reflect back less light and will have a little bit of a flattening effect as well. Mercy May No Color Powder. It's my favorite powder out there on the market. And it looks really untraceable on the skin. It's not going to look like a lot of heavy powder, which is key. So now take kind of a fluffier setting brush and use just the littlest bit of powder. I won't even go into this. I will go into the cap, pick up some powder, pat most of it off, and then very, very lightly set the under eye. You can always add more harder to take away. And I'll just focus it on that hollow. I won't set this area unless, you know, if you have um, more fine lines there, then go ahead and set that. But because I don't have any, I'm not gonna get any creasing over there. Just set where you feel like you get the most creasing. That way you use less product and you still have a nice natural finish. I will set the actual crease of my eye. You can also take just a little bit more and look straight into a mirror and you see where the bottom of the hollow is. Sometimes you can kind of brighten that area and make everything look more flush. If you go to the one side that's closer to your nose, pat powder in to the side of your nose all the way across the bottom of that hollow. It kind of cuts that hollow and makes it less noticeable. You see the difference? It's very subtle but it does make a difference in that one area, which is typically where the hollow is the most dark. So I went ahead and actually finished the rest of my makeup. And I actually use a lot of techniques within my makeup routine to keep my eyes looking fresh and a little bit more awake. I'd be happy to do a separate video on that if you guys want to see some of the other makeup techniques I use to keep my eyes looking a little bit brighter and kind of draw attention away from the hollows. This is certainly not kind of um, a replacement for getting fillers. Fillers are really the only way that you can completely get rid of the hollowness under your eyes. But for those of us that don't want to go the filler route or don't feel like we need to, these are the makeup tips that I personally use to make my under eyes look more awake, less hollow, while still looking hydrated and fresh. So I really hope that you guys did enjoy the video. If you enjoyed it, if you were one of the people that were really excited to see it, I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up and if you like me I would love to have you back so make sure to subscribe as well and with all of that I will see you all in my next one